all the young people to come on up. Come on up. Come on up, Come on up, guys. Don't make me ask. Come on up. Come on up. Move up.
quiet. Because a man puts the air conditioner in, the room is cool, and, and, and the room is cool, and apparently they stayed there that year in that room. <laughs> just, I look at the bird tennis, and it's like, what happened? Man, that's what was trending that year. Uh, so anyway, hey, listen. Praise the Lord. God bless everybody. Good to see you here on Wednesday night.
doing. If you're over 18, they don't really care a whole lot about you, what you think and what you do. But when one of their peers has the Holy Spirit inside of them, has the willingness to model for the children and for the young adults who are looking up to him, he is teaching them how to freely praise. So I want to do that again because I'm telling you what,
to sustain it.
so easy to complain about it. so many things that we feel in the flesh but the more challenging and the right thing to do if you have come through life and we're still standing with whatever our testimony is that we should give him praise church itself, the living body of Christ, would do its work. So when were you hungry? When were you thirsty? When were you under a bridge? When were you abandoned? When were you lonely? When were you on drugs? When were you at your wit's end? When were you confused? When were you abandoned? And God said, when were you thirsty? Hungry? Sick? Needed a visit. He says, for when 
Father, that you've done it for any one of these. You have done it for me. And we stand on that promise here at City Limits. Just like that day when the disciples said, Lord, let us go through Judea. We can go that way. We can go around this this hood, this place called Samaria where these people that have been mixed and everything are. Let's go around, Lord. And Jesus said, no, you go. I must, I need to go through Samaria. Many of us have been, many of us have been residents of Samaria. And God has saved us there. He has seen fit to shed his light upon us. And we need to be grateful. says in God's word, to forget not from where you've fallen. Don't ever get so proud Amen. that you forget where you came from. Because on the day that you forget that, you're there again. You're in the same place. Amen. And that's what gratitude is every day. And it doesn't matter what's happening to you. If you seek gratefulness, Seek to be grateful. You can always find something to be thankful for if you really want to. And the devil will tell you every day there is not much to be, there is not. Traffic is not, the weather is not, this is not, coffee is too hot, this is too cold, this is too warm, I'm late, I'm going to be late, this is not right, we don't have enough, it's not going to work, I don't trust them, I don't trust him, I don't trust her. But with all that garbage that he puts through your mind, there's always something in you. Amen. Amen. Church, you may be seated. Thank you, Lord.
they could have open enrollment now. Uh, which means, like, but I want to tell you about this because a lot of you think, well, well it won't matter. You know, uh, there will be people in line that are going to be trying to get into the school. And you are on the front line and the forms are right in the back over there if you want to go with me tomorrow and see about this. Some of you do not know when, what happens for our kids. If, I mean, it's up to us to know where, where they're going next and what they're doing, you know. And if you don't, if you don't make a decision, they'll make it for you. Right? Amen. Right, Louis? They'll make it for you. If you don't stand up as a parent and make a decision, and do, they'll make, uh, uh, someone will make it for you. And, uh, and that's how they get guys like me, you know, off the street. Well, there you have it. Amen. Please sign up. She dropped a, a big spatula on her foot and cut the major tendon on the top of her foot, and she's having surgery tomorrow morning. Yeah, so thanks for pulling that. Oh, no, I had that knife on one side, apparently. It cut, it cut through the tendon. And if any of you know that, you know, in Roman times, what they would do was, they cut an arm and stick. Yes, I'm going to say that biblically so you can see how deep it is. What they do is they cut you on the battlefield, and if you begged, begged enough, or if it was a, a, somebody of high rank, a general, you know, they would just cut your two big toes off. Because you can't fight, you ain't running, you ain't walking fast, you ain't doing nothing quick, you're not going to balance, you can't swing a sword, you can't do anything. So they would just take, you know, those two toes that we take for granted is, is our balance. And and so I just, I want you to imagine if you hit those yards and the, the sister, or you, they just take you out of, uh, they take you out of the game, you know, at exercise, going to the gym, anything in life, okay? So let's take it to us here, ready? You stand in the gap for her? Okay, if you're standing here, would you reach your arms out? You might come up if you want to, I, I don't care. Please, do it, just do it. The, the, there's a couple of women standing in the gap. Come on up here, thank you, Debbie, thank you. Thank you, Kathleen, thank you, thank you, girls. Thank you. Come on, baby. This is this is our buddy up here. That's it. Our Father in heaven, we come before you. And uh, in your word, it says that that uh, you asked, uh, I need someone. Can I find somebody who will stand in the gap for this one that won't stand on their own or can't stand? And you said, I want somebody to stand in their place in their stead. We thank you for Pastor Beck, and we pray for Terry tonight, that tomorrow, that with the anesthesiologist, with whoever's handling her foot, uh, the in, in, any infection, and how they try to put things uh, back together for the best possible outcome, that you will be with every doctor, every nurse, every attendant, everyone that they will even tonight that they will sleep well have no arguments at home with their wives or their husbands or their children but will be well rested and at the best at the peak of their profession and take care of our sister with due diligence we thank you now in advance in advance for minimal even no damage at all in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Give the Lord a hand. Thank you so much. Love you all. So keep you posted. Where is, he's, not, he's upstairs teaching, isn't he? John. No, not John. I'm looking for Dwayne. Movie man, hey, hey, listen, uh, thank you so much for coming out. I'm gonna ask if the guys will maybe take this down for me in a moment. Uh, but I just wanted to, uh, want to just, just to say thank you, you know, to say happy birthday to those who have a birthday in, in this month. And uh, please come out and support us for the uh, school charter thing. It's gonna be in the back if you can get here about 5 30. Doesn't matter how you dress, all we want to do is show up and show that we care about what's going to happen. 
schools and all the money that we pay in taxes that you're going to pay or that you will pay someday when you get a home, when you do whatever, you're going to be paying for it. And I know that in New York they're fighting. I mean, there's parents that are trying to do anything they can to get their kids into one of these charter schools because they know that they don't want them in a shooting gallery. They don't want them in fear. They don't want them bullied. They don't want them to just be passed or pushed along or passed through because of their age. They want them to be educated so that they can be a challenge in this new generation. Amen? Amen. And you have that option right now. You're at the front door. As a matter of fact, there's a form in the back. And if you've got kids or a daughter or son or somebody, in-law, friend, neighbor, you could give them that, that form to be on the front line. It could be open enrollment. It won't be a line for them. They'll be at the top of the list. Amen. I like that. Amen. 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 Okay? So if you can, if you can let me know about tonight, if you're going to go with me, if you let me know, by some way, if you put it down back there so I can know how many pies to order and sodas, because I'm going to have them back there, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to sit with you. Okay? I may have a little tie on, just so I look, you know, a little cooler. And you can have one on, too, if you want. But anyway, I'll, I'll be there. Okay, thank you so much, all right? You give the Lord a hand for that. sleep, right? Average. So anybody here parent? Huh? Is anybody anybody who's got a child in school? How many hours that you think that they spend in school? You think it's six? You feel like when you wake them up and they get dressed, they get ready and you get their stuff on iron, their clothes finally ready, pair of pants, and when you get, get done going through the 14 pair of pants that are not cool enough for that day, then you find the right pair of pants, but they're not right, so you wash them quick, rub them with a wet rag, and iron them so they can wear them again. They basically know their way to the school by themselves, but then when you get that done, then you send them. Now then they're out of your hands. You've got them ready for an hour, then they're out of your hands, and they're in someone else's hands. How many of you can name four of their teachers? How many of you can name, I know you can, I know you can. How many of you can name two of their teachers? How many of you can name all of their teachers? How many of you can name uh, their English teacher? How many of you have ever gone to, uh, uh, to a parent night and see how your child is doing? And God bless you. How many of you know that when you go there to a parent night, it's pretty bleak? In certain schools, it's like, oh, uh, yeah, well, well, there's 22 cookies. We have a sleeve each, you know. One, two, eat red, that's right. It's just, uh, come on, show up and support them tomorrow. It's important, man. It'll make a big dent for our community. Okay? And by the way, it doesn't matter where you live then anymore either. Just that, that taxes and, the, and that kid's money follows them, and then they get a better education. Amen. We'll send them off to college, man. That they do better than us. Hallelujah. Amen. On the uh, third Saturday of this month, which is what? Anyone know? Is the men's conference. I want to thank God for all the ones on the men's conference. It's still on the site. If you want to see it, please uh, please uh, go down and take a look at that, uh, Born Identity. And um, I got a surprise for you tonight, and the surprise is this, is that I'm not going to do a revelation tonight. Why? <laughs> Excuse me, did I get what or what? Why? What? I'm going to tell you later all by myself in a little room. <laughs> I'll tell you later all by myself. Because... God has different plans. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. I've got a whole set of pictures and photos and everything. It's, it's, it's just supposed to put something ahead. But before we hear the next level, which is, which is something I call it the third level. You know, the, the third and final level. We, I think we need to hear something tonight. Could I get some help taking this down, please? Thank you. 
sent out on Facebook. I mean, I'd have stopped playing Candy Crush to get that news. <laughs> Somebody do me a favor. Are there any waters over there? Could I get a couple of gentlemen? Quickly, come on. This is a fun night. Put them right over here for me. Get those over there and put them over here. I think we're going to use them in a minute. So listen, if there's anyone out there and you didn't come to church because it's so convenient to watch it online, please stop by one of those places and uh, purchase a, a case or two of the water. You bring it, bring it right in the sanctuary. The one time where all water is allowed in the sanctuary, bring it right in, right up to the altar. Okay, because if there's anybody thirsty, we want to be obedient. Amen. Take food too. Just start to pile it up. Amen? Amen. Pastor. Talk video. to you. Do you want that video? I do. <laughs> I do want that video. I have it too. I want to talk to you first, all right? I want to say thank you, Ken. Thank you. I know you know what I mean. Maybe a little weird. Yeah. And the camera went, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Please keep the show going. I could have had a beer for that. <laughs> I was on a hunt today for the soul. Anybody know what I mean? On a hunt for the soul of Christianity. Because it, it uh, I was confused, feeling bad that, you know, uh, some things are pretty tough for us sometimes, you know? Right. And uh, sometimes you take a look at, at the other church or maybe another side, and, you know, you all know that the grass is never as green as it really looks, right? It, it never is, you know. I'm so thankful I got so many wonderful, faithful people here and just, they just get it, man. They want to grow in the Lord. But, 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 but something's happening to the soul of Christianity in America. I actually had someone tell me, you know, when it's easier for us to send money and support somebody in another country because when someone, when one of you pastors from down there asks us, we know, you know, it's just sad. You just think these are those people that want to be on welfare and want to give the attitude anyway. And almost made me punch him in the head, but I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Because it kind of punched me. Anybody understand that? Yeah. And you know what happened? <coughs> you know, that made me think. And I just want you to think of it. Just, just think of this situation. Could it be? Could it be? That a spirit of racism has crept into our churches when it comes to those in the inner city. Could it be? Could it be? I don't even want to, listen to me. I'm, I, I, I want to be the last one to even mention that. I want to be, you know, God is God across the board. It's the same. It don't matter, you know. But all of you know that Sunday morning, you know, churches can be the most segregated place in the world, right? Yeah. Yeah. And 
know, our church enjoys so many different, so many different people. Amen. So many different cultures. I mean, we enjoy that. We, we enjoy that. But I have to ask myself that when, you know, I heard, I literally heard it today. It's like, man, I say, hey, have you heard of Jimmy there? Man, they're doing so much. They're doing this. Did you see there? They're doing this, they're doing that, they're going to go out, they're going to do that. Why don't you support them? You know, you do all this, in Los Angeles, this, that, or all over. You're, you're in Africa, you're in this, in Mexico, you're all over. You know, you guys have a whole border. And, and, and when they said the name City Limits, they said, who is City Limits? Oh, that church, oh, no, no, no. Wait, I took money to go. Well, good. Is anyone following that thinking? Well, tell me, I mean, are you, are, is, is anyone following it? Yeah. It's like almost saddening that, that you would think like, you know, uh, you know, you're almost being profiled because of where you are. But Jesus was very clear on the fact that, that his disciples said they, he had 12, 12 gods with him, and they said, excuse me, 11, and they said, hey, we know a better way around here. If you want to get around that time, we're going to do it. We know a, a way up here, a little cut, you know, and just come right down that you beautiful scenery. It's just beautiful. Yeah, you won't even have to go through that little Samaria, that, that, geez, that, uh, that, that project-like place. So you, you know, we don't even know who the people are there. You know, you black, Puerto Rican, or white, what are you? You know, what are you? You know, right? Are you following me, anybody? And it makes you feel like, you know, what am I missing, God? What am I missing? You know, you have a, a pastor tell you, what's your follow-up plan, Pastor John? What's your follow-up plan? You, you know, you seem to be going through, you know, as a congregation, after you think you fill it up, and after you fill it up, and you're doing that for 20 years. What's, what's going on? I'm thinking, I'm saying, I'm saying, wow, that's a lot of people we're impacting then, right? Because I guess if they're saving, they leave it. I don't know how else they're leaving. They're getting, they're getting, they're getting, yeah, they're getting saved. They're leaving with an education about Jesus. They're getting saved. I, I don't know why they had to go, why they had to leave, why they left them. I don't know why. I don't know why they were here. I said, I said, I said so, 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 so let me get this right. I'm supposed to get maybe 250 to 300 seats and get them filled. When I get them filled, then I live my life out. Is that it? Is that? Because I got it wrong then. I I got it wrong. I'm mixed up with this. I'm thinking that's what you're supposed to do. You, uh, God fills the cup, you empty it out, and then he fills it again. Then you empty it out, he fills it again. And you empty it out, he fills it again. You know, because I was in maintenance. You know, I could tweak a little. I could put a seat valve in so that a leak would stop. You know, I could change a little J joint or something like that. I could do that. I could put a wax ring. And so I, I could be a maintenance man. To 300 tenants. I was, right, Lou? I, I really was. And that's what it was. It was their staying there, their commitment, they signed for a certain amount of years, and, and I maintained them. Happy. They knew who I was. I was Jimmy, the manager. I was the guy in charge. I, 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 was, I was here to go to. If they couldn't get it done, come go see Jimmy. So there's your 300. And you get them full and you get them locked in and you fill them and then you maintain them. Maintain them doing what? Maintain them doing nothing? Maintain them feeling good about you? Oh, please don't leave. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. We'll do it. Hey, church, you want more colors in church? We'll paint rainbows in the church. We'll have that. Elephants, what stuff? We'll, we'll get stuffed elephants. We'll do whatever you need. Just don't leave. You know? And then the same other one say, I want this, and I want that, and I want a hippo. I say, yeah, you don't tie, leave. Bye. <laughs> you come maintenance men to money. Anybody follow me? You have a message. Some of you are getting it already. Mm -hmm. Let me 
God shows me and says, saves us, what are you supposed to be doing? He said, I'm supposed to be feeding the hungry. I'm supposed to find a way to visit anybody who's sick. It was that fellowship with people and have some fun in my life too, which I did. You should be having some fun too. Life should not be just a burden and a bill. Right? You should visit them in prison. I think that's being done. Do we do that? I think that we should feed them the food bank. Do we do that? I think we don't always food bank the good meat. Do we do that? A phone for us. I mean, groceries, like, you know, not just a bag of Roman noodles and five, five beans and, you know, some spaghetti and here, you know, but, but you need meat too. You know, as I said, I'll never forget the, uh, the guy who got a kernel. Happy I got a kernel. What, a what? A kernel? Like, I could be just like the Puerto Rican say, no, that was good. Even a white guy could do it. A kernel, I'm thinking, what? A penil. From bottom down, he got a penil. He had that, man, that kernel was good, man. <laughs> thinking about, about a, a soul of Christianity. And my wife, she doesn't even know I know this. She told someone else. They told me. She told somebody last week, this is not a bad thing, so it's not like they said anything bad about me or that they were gospel. It was, it was something positive, a word, you know, encouragement. You know, Pastor Timmy, my husband, was preaching his little heart out. Came at home, he's preaching his heart out. He's giving it all he can give. But I don't know if they really get it. I don't know if they really get it, folks. I tell you, if they really get it, you know, if they're brand new Christians, or do they have to be at a certain place to be heroes via book, uh, via revelation? I mean, do you have to be a mature Christian to hear it? Do you have to be, a, did we set that rule? Who set that rule? Where is it in the Bible? And you must be a mature Christian. Then when you are, thou shalt be part of revelation. <laughs> I, I, I've never seen that. You know, it's, it's in there for when you're a new Christian, old Christian. You can be, I don't care what Christian. It's in the book. It's, a, it's the end of the book. It's the winning, it's the winning game. You know, that's that. Uh, don't you want to read the winning ending game? You know? And, and so, but 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 there's still people that may not be getting it. Like all this serious, passionate stuff is coming out every week. You know, getting slides, showing it, and demonstrating it, showing it. And it makes you think, you know, people are still floundering. If I could use that term now. Floundering around about, about, about you know, my daily problems, my daily issues. Uh, you know, how dare they text me that? What? Candy Crush isn't working? You, you know, you know uh, what happened? To, I forgot my Facebook thing. And, and it blows your whole day. You know, what's my password? What's my, I, I, you know, I have my pressure. I was, what? Don't they have, uh, I, man, every time I come into this church, it's a, it's a different password. The number is password one, two, three, four. That's it. Because these little things get in our way. Don't have a job. I don't have money. I don't have this. I don't have that. One of, uh, all these things. I don't like him. I don't like his face. I don't, don't like how they look. I remember it was a teen challenge. And there was this pastor, and he preached on honesty. He preached on, be honest, man. Share your feelings. Be honest. And it was this guy who I didn't like. So I went and told him. I said, every time I see you, I just want to punch you in the face, man. I was then escorted into a counselor's office, and he told me, you really don't need you to be, you don't have to tell the person that you want to kill them. You, you just say that you're sorry. I've had... I've had bad feelings about you. You remind me of somebody on the street. You remind me of somebody, and it brings up, you know, hurt in me because, right? I mean, being honest with you, you know what I mean? I want to skin you alive, you know? It's just like, what, what's that? You know, I'm just being honest, man. That's what I feel. I'm going to break your neck anytime I see you, you know? It's like, wow, hallelujah. You know, honestly, it's, it, it's, a, it's like, but, but where's the soul of Christianity? Where's, where's the soul of Christianity when we can be that flippant in, in our conviction. Everybody knows on the back of a city limits t-shirt. Anybody got one on tonight? Turn around. What's it say? Come on up here. Come on. I'm going to let you model that. 
and a square trigger, any model of square trigger. Somebody may want one of those. You can put your orders in too late, but you can put it in anyway because I give grace to everybody. All right, isn't that great? Yes, ma'am. See what it says on the back there? Our commission is, wow, look at that, limitless. That's ours for this year, a limitless. To whoever will reach, right? Look at that one. What's it say? Somebody show me. It says, Our is his. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. What's the great commandment? That's it. What's the great commandment? I'm going to show you how the heart and soul, how the soul of Christianity is just. It just, we don't know how it happened. It just, it got flipped on us. That we watched an episode of, of Benny Hinn too much, and I don't know, it just got switched around. What's the great commandment? I, I, I hear it. I think I think I hear it in gold. It's almost harmonizing. <laughs> what is it? But, uh, but the first thing, how many of you almost automatically think uh, we have to go into all the world, preach the gospel, teaching them, to obey all the things that are commanded you as though I am with you all the way to the end of time. Right? I mean, I do too, right? And my attitude is like, go, 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 go. You know, even so, even as the Father has sent me, so send I you. Right? Right? Come on. Come on, it's okay. Let's be honest with each other. Just, just don't say you want to punch me. You know, but just be honest, right? Yes or no? Do we always think it's like evangelism, 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 right? Don't we? We're, we're so action-oriented, like, go, 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 go. That's what he's trying to teach us, Amen. you know? I wonder how a church with 300 people who won't move can ever go. Amen. Amen. Think about it. I mean, how long can you warm the bench before you bat, man? You know, you know some, at some point you got to say, hey, hey, listen, I want to get in the game. What, what do I got to do? And, and that's why so many people, they finally get taught so much that they know as much and or more than the pastor, and they split off and start another church. Amen. Am I right or wrong? Amen. Because because they're not active, they're not doing, they're not doing something, they're not being a part. There's two things at play here. The great commandment is... Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Find the right order then and tell me. Couple of notes. Just, just think about it. So that's the great of the commandment, right? What's the great of the commission? But what's the great commandment? That's where we lost our soul. Is anybody really here? Yeah. Because even a well-intended church will get so caught up in doing that it forgets Loving loving God. I shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Is it all your soul? Mind intellectually. Then your and your somebody find it written for me. Good evening. Luke ten twenty seven. Go ahead. I want you to do a, I want you to do a mental test. I want you to imagine I have a board up here, and number one is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Number two, with all your strength, then with all your mind. I know you. You do training for uh, for many of corporate people. I know that, right? Like uh, Sonia is a, a wonderful, a brilliant woman. 
I don't know what many of you have ever seen them. So it's past the bed and a bunch of other ones there in the water. But here's the thing, it's, it's, it's like, you know, you hear today how people are so impressed with their GPA. Anybody know what GPA is? In other words, how how smart you are, or how much a person knows. Did you know that into getting a job, only 20% has to do with your GPA? 40 to 50% has to do with your EIA. Emotional intelligence testing. I know you're smart, but can you deal with people that do I have to lock you in a little seat with a, with a little headset? Right, anybody follow me? I know you're smart, but, but, but can you touch people? Can you talk to people? Can you relate? Can you present something? Can you sell something? Can you do something? Can you provide a service? Could you lead something? Could you guide someone? Could you do that? Anybody follow me? See, because a smart person, they may know, well, the quickest route is here to there, but they may not have that touch to be able to touch another person and lead them. Anybody follow me? I'm, I'm not trying to mess up any, any just, anybody follow me? Yeah. Listen, I think that brilliance is great, but I don't think that God meant, I think that's why it's very clear that God says God will use the foolish things to compound the wise and those things that are not to compound those things that are. And what he means by that is, is that God's not concerned with your GPA as much as he is your love and your compassion. Anybody follow me? And my concern is that, is, is that life is changing. Culture is changing. And what doesn't change is the blood of Jesus Christ, his salvation, his love for you, how he sent his son for you. And how many of the men, I made it very clear to you that the born identity of a man the born identity of a man is not to is not to love the Lord as God with all his mind. That, 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 that's, that's supposed to be a natural. The born identity of a man is to be a pater, an Abba. Like Abba, but, but only the Abba, meaning the source. The source, or a creator, a creation, a teacher, a leader, a protector, one who keeps safe, or one who uh, treads, or one who makes things safe, one who Find food, one who educates, one who teaches. Amen. A pater, in Greek it's pater, P-A-T-E-R, pater. They're supposed to be a teacher. Find a man now that's uh, going to be a teacher, and, and they're scared to raise their hand in this generation. Because if you raise your hand in your man, oh really, you want to teach kids? <laughs> What's wrong with you? I was told today by somebody in education, they suffer so much with their budgets and everything because of the discipline problem, because there are no men who are teaching. They're, they're almost sliding out of the game. Is anybody following me? They're, they're almost pulling out of the game when, when, when like a man is needed. And I'm not preaching a Father's Day message. I'm preaching a soul of the church message. Is anybody following me? And mothers are just, just exactly as important as an incubator. They, they take that seed of a man and they birth it. That's why the little kids, that's why they say hi mom and not hi dad in the camera. Because it's mommy who birthed me, who carried me, who nursed me. And, 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 man, and that's them. And they, uh, they were made to mother. And there's some people who say, well, I never had a kid. You're still a mother. You're still a mother. I never had a son or daughter. You're still a father. People are going to be led by you, taught by you, fed by you, kept safe by you. Are you following me? And I'm thinking, what is happening to the church now when you can be doing all the right things and nobody even notices? Let me correct that. Not that you're doing anything for notification, hey, please, does anybody follow me? Not that you're doing it to be noticed, but that, but that, my goodness, if you come on the newspaper, you know, 15, 20 times for, for, for getting guns and doing this and doing that and changing a neighborhood, somebody should call you up in the body and say, thanks for making God look good, man. 
Thanks for making the Lord look good. Unless, unless there's this pattern that's developing in us of jealousy almost like. You know, I'm not that good. My church. Really? The congregation. You're the church. Amen. We're just a body, a congregation, a body of and there's a whole bunch having the same, doing the same thing tonight. And can you imagine? If they're all busy planning, doing something, if now, listen, I'm at 17. 17 is the great harlot, Babylon. Amen. Which is going to be a parenthetical chapter. Uh, next to 17 and 18, a parenthetical, or as you would know them, it is an intercalary chapter. It, it's, the, it's the red chair and the line of the blue. Right? We've learned that. Haven't we learned some wonderful things? Yeah. But if we don't get this right now right, the next two chapters are parenthetical, are intercalary chapters. They're, they're the ones that show you what's going to be happening, you know, fits in. But if we don't get this right, we're not even ready to go to that. Because it will go straight right over your head, straight right by your ears. So you may get some in your ears and, and start thinking, oh, oh, I understand, I get it. And, and, and that's not the point of the book. Imagine, I told you to imagine there, you know, that there's a commandment, a commandment, a commandment to love the Lord your God. When you love the Lord your God, the things that hurt God should begin to hurt you. Anybody really hear that? When you, listen to me, when you really begin to love and fall in love with God, the things that hurt him will hurt you. In America, 8,000 people died today of AIDS. Did anybody know that? I think somewhere about 4,600 abortions. And I'm shooting real low. Right? Last month, they burned 50 kids, right? Everybody heard about that one, right? They burned 50 boys, boys, because they were Christian. They burned them. They locked them up, and they burned them. Am I right or wrong? But, but if we only deal with numbers, it makes you numb after a while, too. It's not it's the same number. If we show your face, then you change the channel. Right or wrong? And there's this numbness that has come over the, uh, the body of Christ. And I'm in search for the soul of God, man. Like, where is the soul of God? I mean it, man. Listen to me. I, I don't think I need to elaborate much if I tell you that I'm not here for the money. Right or wrong? Everybody got that clear? Yeah. So then what am I here for? Because I've got this passion for God that will not go away. Yeah. Yeah. And the pater in me, that the ab, the source, or the progenitor, or the one that multiplies or takes forward, or the one that thinks of the following generation, just like, it's my duty to get him to love God. Yeah. Not to make a, a great evangelist and tell us your story, your testimony. Go back out there and get, get on drugs. Come back with AIDS and everything. Come back with herpes and all kinds of other diseases. And then come back. All scarred up, tattooed, shot up, and then come back and, uh, you know, have a testimony. You know, but don't sleep at night because then, then that's the real thing, right? Do you follow me? Thank God we got you and, 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 and you now. Thank, thank the Lord that we have the young ones that we're catching them now. But can you, but can you imagine what, what's happening with the soul of the church, Vinny? With the soul of the church. With the soul of the church. When what hurts God no longer hurts us. We're in trouble. Is anybody following? When what hurts God 
No longer hurt to it because it's not my politics. It's not my wheelhouse. It's not. God doesn't say anything about that. He said, are they hungry? Feed them. Amen. Okay, well, let's just have a board meeting about that. Figure out, is, is that a welfare district? Is that an area that takes a lot? Do they, you know, because, you know, let's send our money to someplace else and dig a well. You know what? Is anybody following me? And we begin to then rationalize and think about it. And, 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 and uh, hold on a second. I gave, you, I gave you an idea up here. You remember? I said what? Heart? Go ahead and read it to me. Heart, soul, strength, and mind. Now say it with me properly. Heart, soul, strength, and mind. And watch what happens. This just happened to me today. I realized, my Lord, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, we've gotten so smart that we flipped that upside down. We now need to love God with our mind first. Is this rational, what we're doing? We're spending this on the rational and on the right thing. And have we thought this through? That's <laughs> better. Does anybody follow me? Yeah. Take that, flip it around and put mind first. Love the Lord you love with all your mind. Well, 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 okay. Well, praise God. You know, praise the Lord. He died on the cross. I got that. I'm, I got this in my mind. I, I got that. Okay, they need, um, let's see, is it, is it good to do that or should we go dig a well? What would be better? What could give us better coverage? You know, what's going to get us on the 700 Club? What's, uh, what's going to get us on? What's going to get me on the eye of God? What's going to get God to say, well done, good and faithful servant? For when you were, you planted. And not only gave, but listen to me, this is something that goes deeper. The soul, the soul of God is when people can see you giving them food, then living the life when they leave. Is anybody following that? You know, you know, not only giving, giving with an attitude, giving with this, giving with that, but giving and living. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody just think uh, giving and then living it. Giving and then living it. And when they see that, that's what, that's what has that transforming power that changes people's hearts and minds and begins to get them thinking, man, God is, God, God is wonderful. God, God always comes through God. God is, uh, listen, God is always on time. If you begin to look at it this way. But when we flip it around and say, love it with your mind, you begin to say, you know, God, what's going on? Why, why are you letting me suffer like this? I love you. In my mind, this doesn't make sense. If you own the cattle on a thousand hills, could you cut one up, please, and send some down? Amen. Please tell me, has anybody got, got, got what I'm talking about? Right? Are you with me? Amen. With me? I sometimes need for somebody to just kind of go like that and smile. It, make, it just it makes me, I don't know, you know, it's, you know, I'm a mansion, you know, boy, I'm, you know, I, Need that encouragement too. You know, sometimes people send me nasty emails, but mostly yeah, they send me good ones, so I, I discount the bad ones. But sometimes I take the bad ones and I bring them out and I read them and I cry and I do. I, I cry and, and here's what I do. I, I, I figure, you know, 10 years ago I'd have told them that, you know, something, and now I'd say, God, what can I do better? What can I do differently? Or is this just somebody who's gotten so used to like, you know, you know, you need to do church my way. And my last church, this is how our pastor acted. We need you to act like him. Or do you want to hear the word? Amen. Think about it. If we took that, that, that commandment, the very first one, if you want to do Revelation 17, if you want to hear about Babylon, if you want to hear about Babylonianism, Babylonianism came from who? From Nimrod. From the great, great, great uh, grandson of Noah. And what he did was everything that you see going on in the world today is Babylonianism. Amen. Every religion that you see comes from Babylonianism. It comes from self. Take care of yourself. Make sure that yourself clear your own mind. Make sure that you feel good about yourself before you leave your house to death. You deserve this. And you deserve this. And you work for it. And you work up. And you deserve it. When we flip it around, it's we loving God with our mind. So it's got to make sense, God. Whatever I do, it needs to make sense. I don't understand why Pastor Jim did that. This, it just doesn't make sense. Well, if you're looking at God with sense 
as being the very first thing that you use to love it, none of it's going to make sense. That God would send his son to die for you, it's not going to make sense. When you just add one of your sins to that equation, it's not going to make sense to you. As a matter of fact, it's going to put doubt in your mind and you're not going to be a true believer. Is anybody with me? Because in your mind, it's just not making sense. It doesn't, this doesn't make sense, you know, that, that God would give his, would send his son for me, that God would be a pater, an Abba, and that he would, he, would, he would send his son so he could die for me. Then he would give us everything, it says in Peter, First Peter, and then he gave to us all things that we need in life so that we may succeed. He gave us all things. So, so he, the creator, who made us, who sent his son, gave us an example of what it is to then not only send him, but then give them everything they need to make it in the world so that they'll be able to sustain themselves. The source, what was happening to the source. Somebody needs to write a book about this in here before somebody who's watching God. I mean it, man. You need to write a book about like what's happened to the soul of Christianity in America. That we I mean, in the great that commandment, think about that. And thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your, and thou shalt love, the, love the Lord. Thou shalt love, I mean, I mean, passionately, romantically, loving him, needing him. Did anybody ever love somebody? I'm not talking about that you've been married so much. I heard a guy, I said, I've been married 35 years, nothing matters anymore. I go to my side of the bed, she goes to her, and, and, and I'm just thinking, my goodness. Where's the love at, right? But think about, think about when you first got saved. Or think about when you first fell in love. Think about it. Think about a time when you were in love. And you know people do stupid things when they love. I mean, you, you, you do the, the it's, it's like, what, where did you get that? What, what are you doing? You're, you're, you're an idiot. You're, 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 oh, my goodness. Right or wrong? Anybody know what I mean about being in love? Has anybody ever been in love? You just like, you get all caught up in it. You just like, you just messed up, you know, did talk on the phone so long, you get bad breath by yourself, you know, just, just, it's just, but does anybody follow me, are you writing letters and, and coming up with poetry and stuff like that, are you like a, a poet now, are you like a, a, a just a drawing little pictures, are you like a Van Gogh, you know, of, 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 the, of, of the postal service, right, come on, does anybody know, and, and, and how did that love feel, it felt so warm, and felt so good, and felt so pleasing, it felt like nothing could go wrong with that. Then as you loosen up on that throttle, as you loosen up on that and you let that go and you, and you let other things in and let things get in the way that, that kind of still there and you're with that person but it's all this other stuff in the way and, and the love just kind of fades away a little bit. You follow me? Do you think the same thing could happen with God? You still come to church. Still love the Lord. I know it. <laughs> Get it? I know it. I know I love the Lord. I know I love the Lord on the way I walk. Does anybody follow me? What happened to the soul of the church, man? Call a meeting for prayer. You know, me as pastor tonight, I'm calling us. To pray. I got some things there and I want to have some prayer. Amen. 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 And uh, what scared me is, is that if you were to call for a night of prayer, nobody would show up. Because we're loving the Lord that was online. Mm -hmm. Wow, man, I'm, 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 I'm busy. Let me check my calendar. <laughs> Aren't you glad God didn't check his calendar when he sent his son for you? That as soon as y'all get right, I'm sending my son. As soon as you get mm, just almost clean enough, I'm saying, as soon as you deserve it, that makes sense to me. I'm sending my son. As soon as you're almost there, but you do the first part, as soon as you're, I'm sending my son. Aren't you glad God didn't check the calendar in order to send the Savior to come and get us and dip his hand down into the dirt and pull us up out of the muck and mire and say, I love you. And wash us with water. Say, I love you. Can you get that through your mind? That I just love you. This will make no sense at all. So you cannot use your brain to get this through. Or you will always be irrational. It will not make sense. 
That's why he said, love the Lord and your God with all your heart. Anybody follow me? With your heart. And the second one is what? With your soul. We have that one pretty mixed up too. Honestly, I mean, isn't that almost a shame that we as Christians, the commandment of God, the very, the main, the one commandment, God says, I'll take all your law, 613, and I'll wrap them up into one. Matter of fact, two. Love the Lord that you've got with all your heart, soul, strength, and your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. I'll, I'll sum it up. I'll make it easy for you. And even making it easy for us, we seem to flip the words around. Love them if it makes sense. Does this make sense? You should have a book with you about this. You, you, should, you, should, build, you should do a little mind map on this. Aren't you glad God didn't do that? Amen. Do a mind map. Do they deserve salvation? Come on, Holy Spirit, chime in. Look, Jesus is on board. He's ready. But how about you, Holy Spirit? Are they ready? Is anybody following me? Yeah. Like God's love, man. God's love to you and I. Thank you. Thank you. It doesn't make sense. That's because it's heart. From your very soul of God to your very heart of God. It doesn't make sense. And his strength in his mind, that stuff comes in afterwards. I'll get you out. I'm always on time. When your mind is right about me, you won't see me late. I'll be right on time because your mind is right about how you view me. Because if you're not viewing me with, with a mind first, say, mm, what's going on, God? Camel on a thousand hill, kill a calf, send me one. But you're viewing him and saying, all things that God does, he does to you for a purpose so that you could grow in your faith. In the book of James, it says, for he, he that is patient, he that is patient, he that endures in trial, he that makes it through the crisis, he that makes it through the trouble, he that does that, he shall be victorious and wear the crown of life that God has promised to them that love him. Love him, not know him, and not knew him, but love him. Love him how? With your heart, with your soul, with the fiber that's in you. Some people say that the heart is fickle. It can go left, right. It's like a switch. It can turn on and off. I love you now. I don't love you now. I love you now. I don't love you now. Right? God's word says, for from the heart is the wellspring of life. And from the heart can be deceitful above all things. That's why he told you, put your soul into it. Put who you are, who I made you to be. Who I made you to be. I made you to be a what? A multiplier. A seed bearer. Somebody that shares, somebody that loves, somebody that gives, somebody that teaches, somebody that educates, somebody that shares, somebody that's kind, somebody that's nurturing. I made you that way. You share that. And you're loving me. When was one hungry? And you fed him. If you did it for him, you did it for me. For them in his love. Some people have these things and they had it mind first to say, I know what we need. Our church isn't filling anymore. Catholic church is filling. We need to have like, a, just come as you are and we'll give stuff away to them. And so that makes, gives them a sense that they're doing something, some work for God. Are you following me? From what people need to be hearing is the word of God. How much he loves me. Why does he love me when I don't deserve it? Because there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus because we are in a dispensation of pouring out this bottle right here and there was a time of judgment. They had judges. And if you did something wrong, then you paid in that way. And they had a time of kings. And if you did something wrong, then you paid in that way. Right? And they had a time of prophets and priests. And when you did something ungodly, then you paid in that way. But right now, God is dispensing grace. It's free. It keeps on going. No belts coming off. And you know every time we do something wrong, we wonder. Well, I guess if God didn't show up that time, he must have been busy doing something. I got away with that one. And we don't know that it's because of grace and mercy Amen. that God has on us that he says, you know, I gracefully, I love you so much. Church, can I, can I give you some place of thinking today? Amen. Where is the heart and the soul of God in your life? I mean, where's the priority principle? Where's God at in your life? I mean, how do you love him? With your mind? With your heart, with your, with your
your heart first and say, I don't deserve this. The first thing you should be thankful for every day is, thank you, God. I'm not getting what I deserve. Amen. You know a man or woman loves God with their heart. When, and that's the first thing. They, thank you, God. I, I, today, I don't get what I deserve. You know that that's a man that's got the heart of God, a woman that's got the heart of God. They, they, they realize immediately with this mind, with my thinking, with my attitude, my selfishness, with my self-absorption, if a man, man uh, listen to me, uh, the very fact that there's still mercy on my life shows that God loves me. I need to love God with my heart, with my soul, every fiber, every attitude, everything in culture has taught me anything. You drop that stuff off like a dead weight and you fall in love with God. And then it begins to show you, says, I'll be there in my time, right on time. As soon as I make a change in you, and the change is I need you to love me heart first, with your soul, yeah. with your strength. I need you to push through. I need you to endure. I need you to go through whatever it takes, knowing that I will never give you more temptation than you can handle or that you can bear. And I will always make a way of escape that you'll be able to bear. Always. Anybody follow me? This week, I need you the next couple of days till Sunday, hunt for the soul of God. There's a simple way that you do it. Watch the numbers on TV, on the news. This many, this many, this many. Numbers make you numb. Put a face on something. Right? It makes you hurt. See, see how many girls that were kidnapped? You see a picture, it's like, mm. But you forgot about the 50 boys that were burned alive. Because all we did, they mentioned the number and said a story. But we see 300 girls, and, and you see the face, and it, it's boom, and it makes it alive to you. Your heart needs to hurt the same way that things hurt God. You know you're going in the right direction when what hurts God is hurting you. If I've got a lying attitude, a selfish attitude, and this attitude, and, and, and this attitude, me first, and you know that God hates that. But when what breaks God's heart, and God's heart is breaking yours, you know you're on the right track. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. Everybody in the olden days, you see, oh, this flesh, if I could just get rid of this flesh, this flesh. Listen to me, God made that flesh. Amen. Don't you turn on it. Amen. God gave you this flesh, has the ability to love, ability to be loved, ability to be complicated, ability to be simple. We've been so confused and deceived. If you want to hear about Babylon, you better get right with God first. If you want to hear about Babylon, you'll not be able to understand her or it. I'll explain next week. Unless you understand God wants to be the central figure in my life. Amen. Not just an alternative lifestyle. He needs to be number one Amen. in my life. Amen. Can I get a couple of you men to just take this up to the next level for me? Listen, can I get a couple of men to come and tell these things over for me? Come on. Come on guys and girls, I'm so sorry. Not not any guys, girls. Say something for me. My friend Stan almost died again today. Right? Yes, I said, unfold that. Come on, guys, come on. Okay, lay it down. Just like that, just. Pull, pull that with lay down. Right there. Right there. Just lay down. Lay down. Put a case of water on each end. Take that lay down. Put a case of water on each end. Now listen to me. Whatever's in you, don't fake it. Don't peek through your Bible. Don't see what your scripture is. Whatever's in your heart right now, just want you to write it down. I want you to know who the other one's for. I don't know if anybody guessed it, but did you guess who the other one's for? It's for me. I want to wrap it around myself at night. I don't believe that the rag is going to heal me. But I believe that 
that sing the names of people who are praying for me, it's going to change my attitude. Is anybody following me? Knowing that people love me and, and, and that they're praying for me is going to change my life. Having you do this exercise also to me is life changing. Because if you look at churches out there today, why aren't you helping? We're doing all the right things. We're trying the best that we can. Like we're giving above and beyond. We're doing above and beyond. Some of us aren't doing anything, and we're going to be convicted tonight. But those of us who are doing all that we can do are getting frustrated. And we have flipped it around somehow and put God mind first and said, yeah, this doesn't make sense that God's not coming through. And pastors call you and say, what are you doing wrong? You know, what's your follow-up plan? What's your, what's your, are you telling, what are you talking about? It is my follow-up plan. You knock on the door and say, oh yeah, yeah, the Tao said, no, he is last night on the U-Haul. He, him and the, uh, him and the Lando have a fight. <laughs> and that's, that's our follow-up plan. What's yours? Well, they're there for $392,000. They're not going anywhere for the next 60 years. So they'll be back next week. Ours, we have to keep changing. But the core gets bigger. The core gets tighter. I trust people so much more. And, and it's just like, it gets so deeper because, because they're called to this. But listen to me. Here's the core. The commandment is to love the Lord our God. Then the commission. That's why we do the commission. Because we love the commandment. We fell in love with God and it makes you do the commission to go and tell. That's what our t-shirt is. People don't even get it. It's so complicated. It, it, it's too deep for them even to get it. I honor the great commission so much and that great commandment. That's what makes me go. I love him so much. That's what makes me go. I remember where I was and somebody went. Somebody was obedient. So I go. Could you do me a favor tonight? Why don't you stand on either letter on it any way you want? Write anything you want. Led from the Lord. Hey, anything you want, a scripture, anything you want. You got magic markers? Here they are. Father in heaven, I want to touch the very heart of God. Right now, I want you to come on down. Say something to them. Say something for me. Pastor, stay safe. Keep strong. Persevere. You shall receive the crown of life that God has promised to them that love you. Anybody got any other magic markers? Come on up, folks. Good. You have five minutes. I don't care how small it is, nor how big it is. Right? Any way you want. Here, look at this. Here. Look. Anything you want. That's something that'll encourage you. I'll let you give me mine. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, and your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day your daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lord, and deliver us from evil. Deliver us from temptation, from anything that would tempt us. For thine is the kingdom, and yours is the glory, and yours is the power, for and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. I want to pray and wrap, wrap something like that around me. Just know that people love you, people are praying for you. If there's more room, if you jump in the middle, I don't even care if you step on it. You take your shoes off and just step on it. That'll just, you know, sometimes people step on me anyway, so I don't mind if we do it spiritually. Please, somebody, right in the middle of that thing. Get, get in the middle, right, right on it. Right big, man. He loves you. It's the simplest message. It doesn't have to be complicated.
They pulled this little thing to the side. The one thing, pull the water tank. One day. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord. Hey, everybody, please, just come on down and write something. Man. Come on, don't, don't, don't be straight. Escriba algo en español. Está bien, hermano. Español. Spanish, English, it doesn't matter. Hebrew, if you know Greek, do it. Thank you. Father in heaven, I thank you for each one down here, Lord. I pray your blessing upon them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go get a tablet. I'm going to take a shot of Edoma. Because it's so beautiful. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your ear. Hey guys, I want you to say hi, Stan. Come on, say it like you want him to stay alive. Say, hi, Stan. Stan, it's just me and you, man. You and me. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is at work. Amen. Father, Lord, we thank you for your love for us. Father, we thank you for your grace and your pouring out mercy on us every day. Father, it's so far beyond us to know how merciful you are and to, to know that you love us so, so completely that it escapes us. But Heavenly Father, we, we want our mind to change. We want our relationship to be a love for you, the, a love to love relationship, Heavenly Father. Allow us not to put you in a box and have theories about our relationship with you, but let it be pure let it be so unique to us because you gave us this love in the first place. Let it be the type of relationship. Let it be the type of connection that is sweet savor to you, Father. Allow us to be encouraged that because of the fact we are still breathing, that we still have time to change it, to change that relationship to the, the one it's supposed to be. Our great commission, our assignment that you've given us, Heavenly Father. Please bless us, Heavenly Father. Bless us in, in a way that, that we know it's only you, that it's not because of our actions, it's not because of our efforts, but because of your love for us and always wanting us to, to get closer and closer to you, Father. Allow us safe travel going home. Allow us to take in what the, the pastor has, has explained to us. And let us get to the action of loving you, Father. Loving you with our, our heart, 
our soul, our strength, and last, our mind. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.